Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at writing numbers in scientific notation and at doing calculations with them using a calculator. Uh, scientific notation is just a way to write really big or really small numbers in a more concise way. And there's a particular way of working with these numbers on a scientific calculator for the types of calculations that we do in chemistry. And if you use this way, it's just so much easier and so much more accurate. Um, I always feel, feel bad for the students who set up a problem perfectly correctly on their paper and then they go to type it through their calculator and a number is in scientific notation and they enter that incorrectly into their calculator and then it makes them miss the entire problem. So I really want to focus in this section on how to get numbers in scientific notation into your calculator correctly. Our objectives for this section are to write equivalent numbers in both regular notation and scientific notation and then to do calculations uh, using a calculator that involve numbers in scientific notation. So scientific notation is a way of taking these two numbers that are already written here um, and writing them in a little bit more concise format. Notice that most of these most of the digits in these numbers are zeros. We're basically going to eliminate the zeros. And we're going to do that by first moving the decimal place and then multiplying by a power of 10 to reintroduce that size factor. So in this first digit, the point 000135, I'm going to take that decimal point. I'm going to move it one, two, three, four times. So how do I know to stop moving it? Well, I stop moving it when I've got one digit that's not a zero to the left of the decimal place. And so I'm going to rewrite the base of that number as 1.35. Um, another way that um, books will often describe this process to this point is that you rewrite the number as if it's between 1 and 10. So you don't want it to be as big as 10, but you uh, just a number between 1 and 10, and that's going to leave you with one digit to the left of the decimal. Now to keep the size of this number the same, I'm going to multiply this by a power of 10. Uh, the number that I write up here is how many places I moved the decimal, or the, the power of 10 is how many places I moved the decimal, and I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So I'm going to write the number 4. And then I also have to give this exponent a sign. This particular number started off as a decimal number, a number that was smaller than one. And anytime you've got a decimal number or a small number like that, it's going to have a negative exponent on the power of 10. Okay, let's work this other example. Let's just rewrite it in scientific notation. So I'm going to write the base of the number with one digit to the left of the decimal. So that's going to become 1.89. Then I'm not going to write all of those zeros, but I do need to count essentially how many times I move the decimal. So I'm going to start over here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I moved it 7 times, so I'm going to multiply times 10 to the 7. Now, since this number started off as a big number, something that was greater than 1, it's going to have a positive exponent. So I just leave it as a 7. So what are we going to do here when we write the number in scientific notation? Okay, first of all, uh, write uh, the base as a number with one digit in front, whoops, there's an R in there, one digit in front of the decimal. And then we're going to uh, multiply uh, times 10 to a power, let's see, the power equals the number of places that you move the decimal and I need to write 
one more note over here. Hopefully there's enough room. Um, a positive power means that you have a big number. And we'll go ahead and add this other one up here because it matches a negative power uh, means that you have a small number or a decimal number. And big and small here are all relative to one. A positive exponent goes with a number that's bigger than one, and a negative exponent goes with a number that's smaller than one. Calculators are very powerful handheld tools. There are multiple ways to enter numbers in scientific notation on most calculators. Some of those techniques are inherently going to cause you to get the wrong answer on the types of calculations that we typically do in chemistry class. So I'm going to show you the best way for doing numbers in scientific notation in chemistry. Please, please, please follow this procedure. Um, if you're entering these numbers any other way, you may run into uh, difficulties and end up with the wrong answer, even though you set up everything correctly. So when you look at these types of calculators, well, how, what, what do we need? We're going to need something that says EE or EXP, depending on the brand. Most of the TI brand calculators, not all, but most, use the EE key, and um, other brands tend to use EXP instead. And so those, those are the, the keys that we need to look for on your particular calculator. We don't want to use um, a key that says 10 to the X on most calculators. We don't want to use a key that says E, just a single E, like E to the X. We don't want to use those keys. We want to use the one that says EE or EXP. So if we're looking at a typical TI graphing calculator, like we have in the first picture down here on the left, if you find the number 7 key and you look above the 7 key, there's a comma, and then the, the second function is the EE key. So you're going to have to do second function EE in order to, to access that. If we look at something like this TI30X, um, on the TI30X, the EE is also right above the 7. Let me change colors here so that it's a little more obvious when I circle this, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Uh, right above the 7, there's the EE key, and it's not a second function. You just um, will we'll type it as is. And then over on this other calculator, which is a Casio calculator, um, most other brands like Casio, Sharp, whatever else you might have, um, they're going to use EXP on this particular calculator, it is down on the bottom. If you look right here, uh, that EXP is all the way down on the bottom. Okay, um, so I think on my next slide we're going to go in, and take a look at how we actually use this key. So here is the step-by-step -step process for how you would type these numbers in on your calculator. Um, let's say you're using a uh, graphing calculator. What you're going to do is type in 6.02 and then second function EE, so you get the EE button, and then the numbers 2, 3. On a graphing calculator, that's what we're going to see on the display. You're going to see 6.02E23. Now, wait a minute, you just typed in EE. Why does it say E over here? I have no idea. This is a decision that TI made years ago on their calculators. Um, yes, the button says EE. -E. Yes, the display says just a single E. And notice it's a capital E, right? We've got a capital E. If you start seeing a lowercase E, you've got a different function and other weird stuff is going on. So you want to make sure it's that capital E. Um, on the TI scientific calculator, if you hit 6.02 EE23, you're going to see what it looks like down here on this. Oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, 
<sighs> that's not the number that was entered here. Down here on the bottom, the number that was entered was 1 times 10 to the negative 6. Um, what I wanted to show you is the difference in display. Um, the, even though it's a TI calculator, it does not show the E. Um, it does not show anything like a times 10. It just shows the exponent as the negative 6 as smaller digits. If you need to enter a negative exponent because you've got a number that's smaller than 1, um, you're going to hit something like 1 and then the EXP key or the EE key, and then your calculator will have some sort of a change sign key. So that's what I'm trying to indicate here with the plus slash minus. That key can look different on all kinds of different calculators. On some calculators, I've seen a negative sign that's in parentheses for the key. On some calculators, I've seen a plus and a minus, and then there are arrows showing them changing from one to the other, which is an awful lot of stuff to put on a single key, but they crammed it all in there. Um, so your particular calculator will have some sort of a change sign key. Um, and so if you have a negative exponent, you've got to get that sign change in there as well. Um, and in these procedures that I'm writing out here, um, if your calculator has an EXP key, that's what you want to type instead of EE. Or down here in the second procedure, if your calculator has an EE instead of EXP, the EE key is the one that you'll want to hit. Okay, folks, time for a little bit of formative assessment. Formative assessment is a check along the way to see if you are getting it. So let's check right now if you are getting this um, entered correctly into your calculator. I want you to take 32 and divide it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and see which one of these answers you get. You may want to pause the video at this point uh, to give your Yourself a chance to work that out. Okay, so here's what you need to do to enter this into your calculator. Uh, 32.0 you don't necessarily need to enter the point zero. You can, but you don't have to. So the way I would type this into my calculator is I would type in 32 and then I would hit the divide key. So 32 divide, and then I'll type in 6.02, and then I'm going to hit the EE. And again, on some calculators, instead of saying EE, it's going to be EXP. And then I would type in 23, and then I would type in equals. Okay, if you did this correctly, you should have ended up with answer C. If you didn't enter this incorrectly, you could very easily have ended up with one of these other numbers or even something completely different. Um, so let me point out a couple of things that are, are common uh, errors when students are first learning this. Um, sometimes students will hit times 10 EE or EE times 10. But notice in this procedure that I just wrote out, we never hit the number 10. And we never hit the times key even. Um, EE or EXP does the same action as typing in times 10, but what it also does is it links the base, the 6.02, and the power of 10, so the calculator understands that's all one number. If you go and hit times and 10, um, you're going to start uh, being off in your power of 10, and even instead of having this negative 23 exponent, you might end up with a positive 23 or even a positive 24 exponent. So uh, double check, try it again, see if you can get uh, this number calculated uh, correctly with your calculator using the EE or the EXP key. Circling back around to our objectives, uh, we need to write numbers um, in regular and scientific notation, and we need to perform calculations in scientific notation with a calculator. If you're struggling with this, come talk to me in office hours. Come visit me. Um, let's get you straight. This is a, a, an easy problem to solve in less than five minutes, so let's fix it now.